Thomas and the Missing Christmas Tree. Every Christmas there is a carol concert on the island of Sodor. The town band plays and lots of people come to sing carols round the Christmas tree. Afterwards there is always a special treat for the children. And this year the Fat Controller wants the party to be an extra special celebration. It was two days before the carol concert. The Fat Controller was very busy giving orders for everywhere to be scrubbed and polished, ready for the special night. The engines were all very excited. They had been helping with the preparations. And now Henry Gordon and Thomas were waiting at the station for the Fat Controller to give them their final orders. You all have jobs to do, said the Fat Controller. Henry, he said importantly, you are in charge of the cards, letters and parcels. Gordon, you will bring the mayor. The Fat Controller paused impressively. Henry Thomas, you will have the most important job. I want you to fetch the Christmas tree. Don't go look after any in Clarabelle until you get back. Thomas beamed with pride. Yes, sir, he said. Will we be able to sing the carols too? We'll see, promised the Fat Controller. That night, the other engines sought in their shed. Why should Thomas go? grumbled Henry. He can't do anything a splendid green engine like me couldn't do. Nor me, agreed Gordon. Anyone would think he was special or something. But Thomas didn't care what they said. He had been picked for the most important job. You're only jealous, he said. And he shut his eyes and went to sleep. The next morning, Thomas set off to fetch the Christmas tree. It would be nice to sing carols again, he sighed as he puffed along on his important mission. Thomas had to go down the line to Edward Station to pick up the tree. The Fat Controller had said that Thomas had to be back by tea time. Thomas picked up the tree and set off on the return journey. It mustn't be long before the Fat Controller was lying on it. But it had been snowing again. Large snowdrifts lay ahead. Thomas was not wearing his snowplow. He whistled bravely and tried to make his way through. He ran into a snowdrift and tried to turn his wheels but it was no good. He was stuck. Suddenly, the wind blew the snow all over him. Thomas was snowed under. Back at the station, it had been snowing too. The workmen rushed up to fetch their shovels to clear a path for the visitors. The other end waited for Thomas to come back. He waited and waited. Perhaps he's stuck in a tunnel somewhere, suggested Gordon. Henry let off steam indignantly. He said, he's much more likely to have been turned onto the branch line. He could have run into a cow, suggested Donald. Silence, said the Fat Controller. We know that Thomas collected the tree safely, but now the snow has brought down the telephone wires. We must assume that Thomas is stranded somewhere near Edwards Station. The engines all felt sorry for poor Thomas. We're not going to leave him there, sir, are we? Asked Douglas. Certainly not, said the Fat Controller. I will need two volunteers to go and find Thomas. All the engines hooted at once. They all wanted to help to rescue Thomas. The twins, Donald and Douglas, were chosen for the job. Quickly, the men fetched the snowplows, and the driver and fireman checked each one to see that everything was ready for the journey. Soon, Donald and Douglas set off to the rescue, feeling cold but comforted. Good luck, the other engines whistled as the twins left the yard. At the junction, they met Toby, Percy and Duck. The Fat Controller has cancelled all trains until Thomas is found, said Duck. So take care. Come back safely with Thomas and the missing Christmas tree, added Toby giving a final blast on his whistle, just for luck. Donald and Douglas puffed bravely on. 
The snow was getting thicker now. They struggled through Edward's station. Donald wanted to stop for a rest. Douglas wouldn't let him. What if Thomas is lying hurt somewhere, he said. Great snowdrift lay across Gordon's Hill. Again and again, Donald and Douglas forced the snowplows into the deep snow. And each time they managed to move slowly forward. They drew back and paused for breath. What's that? Douglas. You can hear something. Very faintly, there came a muffled cry. No. No. Only the wind, insisted Donald. No, listen, said Douglas. No, over here. Oh, it's Thomas, they cried together. Come on, said Douglas. Let's get him out. He must be frozen to his frames in there. The men began to dig the snow away. Thomas's driver and fireman, who had taken shelter in a nearby cottage, came out to help too. It was not long before they had dug Thomas and the missing Christmas tree out of the snow. Thomas was pleased to see the twins, but he was feeling cold and miserable. The men coupled him up behind Donald and Douglas, and they all set off on their journey home. When the engines arrived at the station, everyone gave Thomas such a warm welcome that he began to feel quite cheerful again. The Christmas tree was quickly unloaded, put into its tub, and decorated for the carol concert. There was a great rush to get the station ready, and by the time the mayor and visitors came crowding in, everything looked splendid. Fat controller stood in front of the engines. As a reward for all your hard work today, he said, smiling. May go and enjoy the carols. Be quick now. Yes, sir, said all the engines. Weesh, said James, letting off steam because he was so pleased. The fat controller paused. Kindly remember that this is a special occasion. Be on your best behavior, and I want no, uh, weeshing. Please. The engines took their place at the carol concert. One, two, three, boomed the fat controller. And suddenly, as if by magic, the station was flooded with light. And there was the Christmas tree, decorated with colored lamps, stars, and lights. Then the fat controller shouted, Three cheers for Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends! and everyone clapped and cheered. The engines were delighted. James was so excited that he let out a great wheesh. Everyone laughed, and this time not even the fat controller seemed to mind very much. Suddenly there was a strange whirring noise. It seemed to come from the sky. And there, with his landing light shining brightly, was Harold the helicopter. He came down gently in the snow, and out stepped a figure wearing a red cloak. Everyone cheered. It was Father Christmas. He handed out presents to all the children, and thanked the engines for rescuing Thomas and saving the missing Christmas tree. Happy Christmas, Thomas, and to all your friends, he said. The carol party was a great success. Afterwards, Thomas and Percy went back to the shed together. It's no fun getting stuck in the snow, whispered Thomas to Percy. But it was worth it for the party. Happy Christmas, Percy. Happy Christmas, everyone. <laughs>